Hey everyone, I thought I'd do a quick update with all of the news that's been going on over the past few days. And I know we've been loving watching the eruption on the live feed that I've got set up. And I've posted a couple other videos, but I thought today we'd go through some of the news like we did before the eruption and take a look at what's going on. And we're going to start off pretty light. So the first thing that I found was a video that's apparently trending on Twitter. And it's been making the rounds of the news and apparently over in North America as well on NBC is this group of people who were playing volleyball right by the eruption. And uh, I believe it's part of the volleyball team that's doing it or members of the team. And they thought it would be a great idea to just play a little bit of volleyball with this lava pouring out behind them. So that was, uh, that was a really great thing that I saw. The next thing that I will look at is now Reykjavik Excursions is looking at doing two bus trips to the eruption site for the next little while at least. Now they're going to say that there's two trips a day for the next few days except for on Good Friday and there will be no trips on Easter Day. The first trip that they're going to do is going to be every morning at 11 a.m. And then there's going to be an afternoon trip at around 4.30 p.m. for those who want to see the eruption after dark. And those will be coming from BSE, which is in Reykjavik. The trips back from the eruption site, for those of you that are watching and you're going in the morning, you'll be coming back at 8 o'clock. So you'll be leaving Reykjavik at 11 o'clock in the morning and you'll be coming back leaving uh, from the eruption site at 6, 6 p.m. Sorry. And then uh, those of you that go for the evening one, you'll be leaving Reykjavik at 4.30, as I said, and then coming back at 11.30. So there's that. One thing that I thought was really interesting is they're saying that some of this really, really hot magma is actually coming out and it's an even flow. They're saying that the magma came up at the beginning was between 1,200 and 20 to 1,240 degrees Celsius, which is, you know, extremely hot. And they're saying that they have not seen such hot material appear in eruptions in Iceland before. And that was Ottermann, who's a volcan volcanologist and research professor at the University of Iceland. And he said that about the eruption that's going on right now. He said that the steady flow of magma in the eruption was actually pretty surprising to him. And that the eruption has continued more or less in the same direction since it began. The magma is very hot and it's starting to melt from the inside of the eruption channel. He's saying the more the magma rises, this also causes the eruption channel to become more stable. There's no tension in the Earth's crust to push it to close. And they're thinking that it may take maybe more earthquakes to actually stop the eruption. So this could go on for a little while because there have been in this area less, fewer and fewer earthquakes that have been going on. And we'll take a look at that in a second. Another video I saw recently, which was absolutely terrifying for those of you that are perhaps going to the eruption site, is just what looks to be a solid mass of hardened lava actually just opens up into this pool of I mean we were just talking about it's 1200 degrees this pool of lava that instantly just opens up and I know that a lot of them are saying don't go near it because this can happen at any moment and even extend out beyond the edges so this one here is more or less confined to the center or on top of where it's already been but it could very well just spill from the side and push out further from where it currently is. So again, this video was really eye-opening. I went to the eruption last week and seeing something like this would have been incredible, but also perhaps made me realize exactly how dangerous it would be to be anywhere close to the lava. Last night, there were a few accidents at the eruption site. Nothing too serious. There was a woman that broke her arm and needed medical assistance in that regard. And there was another with a man in his 50s who fell and he needed an ambulance and then a few other minor issues that required medical attention. Now, there is a lot more ice in the area and because it is steep slopes, to get up to the eruption site it is becoming more and more dangerous especially for those who are not well versed in traveling or hiking through this type of terrain so there is definitely a lot of caution that one needs to 
to keep in mind when going here, especially when you're going at night because visibility is a, is a lot lower. And so you want to be very, very careful as you're going. And hopefully no one else gets injured before, uh, you know, the ice and the snow sort of goes away for the year as we go into the summer. So the news has talked to one of the owners of this particular piece of land where the eruption is occurring. And um, this is kind of one of those like, <laughs> this is not really news, but I guess people were wondering. He's saying right now there's no thought to charge an entrance fee to go here. So there's much like a lot of the waterfalls that are in the south, they are owned by the people technically who own the land and they could you know limit access or charge fees to get in there but at this point in time the owners are more concerned about getting people to the site that want to see it and making sure that the land and the environment isn't destroyed by actual people and uh, making it safe and so there's no entrance fee planned at the moment but i mean who knows this could change in the future as more and more people come to the eruption site and as tourism opens back up a big piece of news that I saw, which again, I'm really glad that I went to the eruption site last week and I'm hoping to go again, but I'm going to wait until it sort of warms up so I don't have to deal with the cold, but there is an astronomical amount of cars going to this area and Easter weekend, they're expecting that it's going to be even more than previously. One thing that I noticed that could really impact the ability for people to go to the eruption site is that they're changing the rules of the road so it's no longer going to be a one-way road in that particular stretch what that means is that you're not going to be able to park your car on the side of the road anymore and you will have to use the parking lots the issue with this is that there are not as many parking lots as one would imagine so that means there's less cars that are able to park and less availability for people to go to the eruption site when they want I would imagine that evenings and early mornings are probably the best bet. If you're going in the afternoon, it's probably going to fill up, but they're saying expect to wait for a little while. You're not going to be able to just show up with your car and park right away and go again, unless you probably go first thing in the morning. So big news now is that there has been some new seismic activity under Lambafet, and that's a little bit to the east of where all this eruption is going on. We'll take a look at a map in a second. Now, the seismic activity and the earthquakes, they're not, they're not big. They are, there was two earthquakes, one with a magnitude of 2.6 and another of a magnitude of 2.9. And those were the largest in the cluster that occurred last, last night uh, or perhaps two days ago. There... The reason that this is actually making news is that because there were several in a row and that's why they want to investigate what's going on here. They are saying, however, that there's no sign of an eruption at this area, but I am reminded of how things went before the current eruption that's going on, whereas even the day that the volcano erupted, there was a uh, scientist that went on the news and he said, this thing's not going to erupt. And then, you know, an hour or two later, there was an eruption. So it's, um, it's not a science. They're not expecting it to erupt. And that's what they're saying. But based on what just occurred, perhaps this is something that something uh, we should keep an eye on. So taking a look at this map here, we can see the current eruption is in this area right here. And the new earthquakes are over here in this other section to the east. Now, again, there have been a lot of comments and a lot of statements that this eruption could trigger other eruptions in the area, and these are fairly close, so perhaps that's something that uh, could happen. But again, this is just something I wanted to bring forward, make sure that we're kind of paying attention, get everyone that's watching this channel to say, hey, you know, maybe you guys can start looking at some of the data that's coming out or some of the experience that you have in sort of these clusters of eruptions and see if this is something that might happen. So looking at 
some of the earthquake information on the meteorological site we can see over the past 48 hours before when I first started reporting on this stuff there's a lot of these green stars which was magnitudes of over three and you can see now although there's still quite a bit of activity in the eruption area itself most of it is is fairly calm and we can see over here to the to the uh, east of the eruption site we're getting a couple more of these earthquakes sort of spreading out along so i'm not sure exactly what this all is going to entail as, as time goes on if it's just something that happens sort of this eruption causes and triggers earthquakes that are minimal or if it's just natural progression but again looking at the table last two two days 48 hours there's no magnitude three earthquakes nothing over that it's all been very calm but there was again notable earthquakes in this in this area here to the east so that's it i just wanted to keep everyone updated there's quite a bit of information in this video but hopefully it was all very informative and interesting and again you know just to sort of end up the video i really love this lava pool video so if you like uh, if you like what you're seeing and hearing and you want to see more of this hit the like button hit the subscribe button put in the comments maybe more stuff on what you want me to report on or what you want from this channel or if you have any information on stuff like this lava pool or the new earthquakes that are surfacing to the east of the eruption site throw those in there too because i'm definitely interested to know on what's going on and what kind of experience people have with that so until next time thank you so much for watching and enjoy the lava pool video